Hello, loved ones. Thank you for joining me today. If you are new to this channel, welcome to the family. Today is episode two of our series called A Sister's Love. My sister recently passed away. Our first video featured my sister's testimony given by my sister approximately one year prior to her passing. Today's video will feature tips for coping with grief, the emotional component we may experience while dealing with grief, my personal grief journey, and signs of grieving that may indicate that a mental health professional assistance may be needed. It's my intent in today's presentation to encourage those who have lost loved ones who passed away. Grieving is a natural, normal, but personal journey that will take time. I pray you embrace the journey and that you will grieve with hope. Welcome to Fuel by Intentions, where we talk about faith, family, finances, fitness, and fun. Sponsored by Bynum's Business Solutions, where the right fit is made simple. We specialize in tips, tools, and strategies designed to help you achieve your financial health so that you can take control of how you spend your money so that you can spend more time with your family, friends, and doing the things you love. So let's jump right into the video. What is grief? According to the Mayo Clinic, grief is a strong, sometimes overwhelming emotion for people, regardless of whether their sadness stems from the loss of a loved one or from a terminal diagnosis they or someone they love have received, people might find themselves feeling numb and removed from daily life, unable to carry on with regular duties while saddled with their sense of loss. Grief is the natural reaction to loss. Grief is both a universal and personal experience. I wholeheartedly agree that it's both natural, but a personal experience through our uniqueness and the uniqueness of the relationship, we all grieve differently. The Mayo Clinic goes on to say that individuals' experiences of grief vary and are influenced by the nature of the lost. Some examples may include the death of a loved one, the ending of an important relationship, a job loss, loss through theft, or the loss of independence through disability. Mourning can last for months or even years. Coping with grief and loss. Coping with the loss of a loved one may be one of the most hardest challenges that many of us may face. When we lose a spouse, sibling, a parent, our grief can be particularly intense. Mourning the loss of a loved one takes time, but research tells us that it can also be the catalyst for a renewed sense of meaning that offers purpose and direction to life. Here are four strategies that may help you process and come to terms with loss. Number one, accept your feelings. You may experience a wide range of emotions from sadness, anger, or even exhaustion. All of these feelings are normal. And it's important to recognize when you are feeling this way, if you feel stuck or overwhelmed by these emotions, it may be helpful to talk with a licensed psychologist or other mental health professional who could help you cope with your feelings and find ways to get back on track. Number two, take care of yourself and your family. Eating healthy foods, exercising, and getting plenty of sleep can help your physical and emotional health. The grieving process can take a toll on one's body. Number three, do not grieve alone. You may want to retreat into your room and cry alone for days on end when you lose a loved one. While it is important to take care of yourself and process your feelings, try not to become disconnected from your community. Your family and friends will want to care for you. And though it is hard to let people in, you should let them. You will likely find that sharing your experiences will bring you closer to those individuals. And number four, remember and celebrate the lives of the loved ones. Celebrate their life by sharing your memories 
time spent, and fun moments. Anniversaries of a lost loved one can be a difficult time for friends and family, but it can also be a time for remembrance and honoring them. Recognize their life on their birthday, holidays, special days that were meaningful to your relationship, and the date of their passing. It may be that you decide to collect donations to a favorite charity, passing on a family name to a new baby, or planting a garden in their memory. What you choose is up to you, as long as it allows you to honor that unique relationship in a way that feels right to you. There is an emotional component to grieving. It may include feeling like you're going crazy, feeling like you're in a bad dream, or questioning your religious or spiritual beliefs. Here are some other emotional experiences a grieving person may encounter. Number one, guilt. Many struggle with guilt in the aftermath of a loss. Some feel guilty that their loved one died while they survived. Others grapple with things said in anger or left unsaid. They may fixate on their most unflattering moments with the person lost. Rather than thinking about the relationship as a whole, when a person dies, sometimes a person will brush over a deep and meaningful relationship with a broad stroke, creating a distorted picture of reality. Guilt after a death or other losses can lead to getting stuck thinking about what could have or what should have been. Number two, numbness. Numbness describes the lack of feeling that may come over a person in grief. That absence may feel alarming, but numbness is the mind's way of protecting a person from feeling overloaded. We simply cannot sit in a constant state of overwhelming pain. And so the mind responds with periods of numbness. Numbness can be a feature of profound sadness. Number three, disillusionment. When a person suffers a loss, they may become profoundly disillusioned with the world around them, a feeling of disappointment. A person may feel disillusioned by the medical establishment after a difficult hospital experience. They may feel disillusioned by their family or community if they feel unsupported or abandoned. During their time of need, disillusionment can set a person emotionally adrift, feeling unable to count on the institution and people that help them feel grounded. Number four, relief. After a loss, a mourner may sigh in relief that the ordeal is over. Whether that ordeal is a death after a long illness the end of a tumultuous relationship or a lost friendship, the lead up to the end can be profoundly depleting. Most people think of grief as something that happens after a loved one's death, but grieving can also occur before the death. This experience is known as anticipatory grief because it occurs in anticipation of a death or other types of loss, such as the loss of abilities or independence. Anticipatory grief can be experienced by loved ones as well as a person who is ill or dying. Number five, gratitude. As we make sense of the loss, some find gratitude in their grief. Gratitude is a quality of being thankful and a readiness to show appreciation for. And to be thankful, appreciation, recognition, acknowledgement, respect, a sense of obligation, indebtedness, they may feel grateful for the time with the person lost, grateful for an opportunity they received, or grateful for what that lost thing gave them. Grief is complicated. We have emotional experiences that fluctuate. Be kind and gentle to yourself and remind yourself that grieving is both natural but personal. You will experience your healing journey 
in your own unique way. If you are experiencing loss, what emotions is profound in your grieving experience? Let's talk about it in the comment section. My personal grief journey. I am in the place of remembering and celebrating the life of my sister. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18 says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we are still alive, who are still left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the triumph call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and our left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. I know without a shadow of a doubt that my sister was saved and I know I will be reunited with her in heaven. Therefore, I talk about her a lot and I celebrate the wonderful times we shared. Anticipatory grief, I know my family and I have experienced that. My sister had over 50 surgeries. With every surgery, you go through the what ifs. Also, my sister had dialysis three times a week and had blood pressure issues every time. Therefore, we constantly thought of what could be. She also talked about death. She would always say, I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not scared to die. It's amazing because a few weeks before her last surgery that ultimately led to her death, we spoke of death and I told her that I wanted her journals. Sure enough, she left a note asking her daughter to give me her journals. In her apartment, we found letters that she had written to us to have in the event of her passing. Although she had a lot of medical challenges, I can't say that I'm experiencing relief, only because she finally made it back to independence and she was living the life she loves despite her health challenges. I would say that I am experiencing gratitude. For me, I choose gratitude as a way to cope with loss. Philippians 4 and 8 reads, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, then think about such things. I feel very grateful for the time that I shared with my sister, and I can't but I can't help but to think of the lovely, pure, and admirable things about her. I know people who lost their siblings suddenly at a much ager, younger age than my sister. Then I just am overcome with gratefulness for the time and relationship I had. I know that whatever I'm going through, it could be worse, so I find joy in what I have. We had a great relationship. Honestly, I can't remember anything negative in our history. She actually loved being a big sister and treated me really special. At her service, I read a tribute to her and our relationship. That's my way to honor and to celebrate. 
Therefore, I will read it here to document our lifelong experience. So this is my tribute to my sister. Hello, I am Ramelda's younger sister. If you don't know me or you have not heard of me, then you don't know my sister. You see, we had a unique beginning. At the age of five, Ramelda discovered that she'd be given a new sibling. It was her request that it be a girl. The day our mom brought home our brother from the hospital, they had to take Ramelda to the hospital. She got extremely sick because it was not the girl she requested. You can imagine her excitement when I arrived three years later and was the baby sister she longed for. From that day until her death, she treated me as that special person she desired. Ramelda loved being a big sister and I reaped every benefit. She would run home from school to feed and hold me. I enjoyed our weekends of focused attention, playing in her cul-de-sac, teaching me scriptures, playing games, and reading books. She took me on my very first vacation to California. She packed my bags full of only new clothes she had purchased and sat with me as I had my first airplane ride. She bought my first bike after I assured her that bikes don't come in boxes. She hosted my 13th birthday slumber party. She would watch me for hours as I perfected my latest drill team routine. No, that's not an exaggeration. She really watched for hours. She watched me graduate from high school and college and supported me as I said I do. I don't quite remember when our relationship morphed into friends. Due to our age difference, my sister was definitely an adult figure for me. Yes, ma'am, was the acceptable answer to any instruction she gave. That being so, you can see why I am extremely humbled to turn the tables and honor her and her legacy. Romelda was many things to me, but today I want to focus on three traits that I believe we can all emulate to remember her and move her legacy forward. Number one, a woman of faith. Romelda truly was a woman of faith. Daily, she lived out James 1, 2 through 4, which reads, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. It is easy for us to say we love the Lord when things are well, but when times get tough, that's when our true faith shines. As she herself indicated, she would go from standing to falling without warning. And while she was still on the floor, she would say, I trust you, Lord. Disappointment can truly steal your joy and make you question your faith. But time and time again, I watched as it propelled her to a deeper walk and closer relationship with Christ. The most powerful moment for me was how she handled the results of not receiving one, but two kidney donations. You see, the approval process to receive a kidney is long, tedious, and very detailed. Through the waiting period, she would speak of life without dialysis and how excited she was to resume some of the simple things in life. Therefore, for her to get prepped for surgery, be rolled in the operating room, and to wake up to be told that the surgery was canceled after anesthesia was given, that's devastation in itself. But to repeat the entire process again, and then two days before the surgery, to have it canceled, that's double disappointment. Ramelda's response was, Lord, I trust you. 
Not only did she trust him with the multiple surgeries, but the added struggles of how will I afford the medicine? Will I be able to stay in the hospital until total recovery? How many days will my insurance cover for physical rehabilitation? She truly trusted God. And, all, and although her prayers were not answered the way she wanted, God did answer. And he provided the needs that will enable her to make it to the other side of the trial. James 1, 12, 1 says, Blessed is he who preserves under trials, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Ramelda has stood the test and she is now in glory wearing her crown of life. Number two, forgiveness. Ramelda had a heart for forgiveness. Mark 11, 25 through 26 reads, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. I think this stands out to me because she was so determined and such a strong-willed person. Her ability to forgive brought out that softer side. She loved people, I mean all people, and loved deeply. Therefore, when she was wrong, she hurt deeply. You see, Ramelda had to learn independence quickly. As a preteen and during her early teenage years, she was allowed to roam free in the back streets of Los Angeles, which can make you tough. Or, okay, so she was a valley girl, but roaming free still had an effect. She gained a rough exterior, so her ability to forgive easily and often was a juxtaposition to her normal personality. I knew it was a gift God had bestowed upon her. I have seen her sad many times as she reached out for relationship with no or limited reciprocation. One time I remember when she was hurt by our brother. He had hurt her deeply to the point that he was no longer her brother and we were forbidden from saying his name. To my surprise, out of nowhere, she was helping him move into his new apartment, providing food and furniture, and going by weekly to supplement whatever need he had. I asked, did he apologize? The answer was no, but she had forgiven him and moved on and did all she could to ensure to uplift, support, and encourage. From that moment, I realized that reconciliation was always an open door for her. An apology was never needed, just a phone call or a visit, and she could resume as if nothing had occurred. She truly lived out the power of forgiveness. Number three, strong and courageous. Ramelda was strong and courageous. In Joshua 1, 9, the Lord told Joshua, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Ramelda truly believed that the Lord would be with her wherever she would go. So she decided a few months after her first amputation that she would come to California. For our birthdays, honestly, I was not sure that was a great idea, but I stuck to my motto that you should never tell someone what they can't do when they think they can. Her daughter agreed that she could come. And it's funny because we brainstormed things that could happen and how it would, how we would react. What if she gets sick, we asked ourselves. The answer, take her to the hospital. There's one in every city. 
My husband and I planned a vacation in a vacation and booked a resort in Palm Springs so that the majority of her trip would be in a handicapped accessible environment. She had worked hard in physical therapy and was prepared to conquer the eight steps to get into our home. It was an adventure as my 12 year old niece and I tried to help her up the steps and she went when we were just when she was just about to fall, my brother-in-law appeared out of nowhere to save us. For me, I was traumatized and ready to call it a night, but not Ramelda. Is it game time yet? She did not let a hiccup spoil our bonding. While at the resort, she did become ill and spent several days in the hospital. Every day, she had a smile on her face the day she was released, she insisted that we continue the fun and we laid out by the swimming pool. On Sunday, as she was dressing for church, she fell. My solution, let's call the fire department, they can help. Her response, let me try one more time, I know I can do it. You guessed it, she did. Somehow she managed to help me, help her get up and get dressed. By this time, I'm done. I say, I'm fine if we miss church today. Her response, no, we can go. We can catch the late service. I know my sister was strong, determined, and courageous, but that trip showed me just how strong she was, even one leg down. Her desire was to be able to live on her own. Less than 30 days from returning home from her California vacation, her second leg was amputated. She worked tireless to gain her strength and was able to move into her own apartment. Strong and courageous, strong and courageous she was as she got herself to every doctor's appointment, to dialysis three times a week. She did her own grocery shopping and of course was active in her church family. Yes, she was strong and courageous, not discouraged or afraid, and knew for certain that God was with her. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your time and for your attention. How are you coping with your grief journey? Have you experienced anticipatory grief? Are you grieving with hope, knowing you will one day be reunited? Let's talk about it in the comment section. As we close, I would like to discuss when it's time to seek professional help for grief. If you're experiencing symptoms of complicated grief or clinical depression, talk to a mental health professional right away. Left untreated complicated grief and depression can lead to significant emotional damage, life-threatening health problems, and even suicide. But treatment can help you get better. Contact a grief counselor or professional therapist if you feel like life isn't worth living, wish you had died with your loved one, blame yourself for the loss or for failing to prevent it? If you feel numb and disconnected from others for more than a few weeks, or having difficulty trusting others since your loss, or are unable to perform your daily and normal activities, please, please, please seek professional assistance. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, live with intention. Be intentional.